So we've just completed quite a few tutorials on object oriented programming now. We've gone through pretty much every principle of the OO programming paradigm. And now we're just going to kind of come full circle and reflect on what we've learned and drop some keywords and things like that. So again, like I mentioned at the start of our OO journey, uh, C Sharp is an object oriented programming language and using OO will really help you structure your projects when your projects get very large they're going to be a lot easier to maintain you're going to practice a lot of code reusability perhaps in the future if you continue this journey you're going to work with other people perhaps in a company that also understand OO programming you're all going to know and already understand the same techniques for writing software so you're going to hit the ground running really quickly so let's just go through some of the terminology again just so you fully understand and then we're going to move on to something a bit different so object oriented programming again it's a paradigm which is a way of doing something we talked about classes now classes model real world objects so if you have a piece of software about a library then a class might be a book because a book is a real world object your book class should be highly cohesive that means the class about the book should only be about the book it shouldn't be about the user reading the book so when you have a book class, all the methods, all the properties should always be about the book. This is very good practice. And your classes should be loosely coupled. That means your book class should be about the book. Your user class should be about the user. And they shouldn't really have much in common with each other. Objects. Now objects is creating a new instance of a class. So a class is kind of like the template with all the methods and properties. And when we want to create a new instance of that, you can have one or thousands if you want. That is called creating an object. So an object is just an instance of a class. And when you create an instance, it's called instantiation. Now inheritance. Inheritance promotes reusing code. And when you reuse code, it makes it more maintainable. We don't have to copy code and put it in every single class because if we have a class like dog, then it can inherit from animal. If we have a class called cat, again, it can inherit from animal. And a lot of these classes will have the same features. So you're going to use and write a lot less code. And when you write a lot less code, that means your code will be a lot more maintainable, a lot easier to manage. Not only that, the file size of the software will be minimal. And also testing the software as well, you're going to have a lot less code to test. So inheritance all in all is a very good principle to practice. We talked about polymorphism, that weird Greek word that means many shapes or many forms, which we achieved with method overloading when talking about methods, how we can have different parameters but with the same method name. But also more recently we talked about polymorphism with method overriding. So in a base class like animal, we can say make noise then when we inherit from that class in a dog cat hamster class we can override that method and provide our own functionality and we can see the result of that when we run the application like when using the dog class the dog will bark when using the make noise method when using the cat class the cat will meow so we can reuse this same kind of method but providing different functionality and that is polymorphism and the last two now the last two people get confused between the two because they're very similar and they do go hand in hand and that is encapsulation and abstraction now encapsulation hides the internal functionality of an object and it only allows access through a public set of functions, for example. So when we talked about access modifiers, public and private, because we want to hide our sensitive information, like our private fields, for example, but only access them through public methods. So that way we can sort of verify the data and make sure people aren't breaking things. So things like that, for example, and also c -sharp properties. When talking about abstraction, it means displaying only 
essential information and hiding the nitty gritty details. And we did this through abstract classes and also interfaces. So imagine like a coffee maker. If you want to brew a coffee, you press the coffee brew button. If you want to start a car, you turn the key. You don't need to know how a starter in a, in a car works or an alternator or battery charging. As a user, as a developer, you just need to turn the key to make the car work. Similar with a coffee maker, you brew a coffee, you don't need to know how the electronics work, how the water is heated, all of that is abstracted away from you. It's unnecessary information if you're just an end user of these things like a coffee maker or the driver of a car. You just do not need to know this. And that's abstraction. And we see this in everyday life, every day, multiple times a day. And that is the difference between encapsulation and abstraction. Again, both key object oriented programming terms, but they do go hand in hand a lot. And at times it can often feel like there's a bit of a blurry line between encapsulation and abstraction for that reason. So congratulations, we've gone through all of the principles of object oriented programming. And if you choose to take up another language like C++ or Java, you can take these principles across and hit the ground running almost immediately. It is not tied to C Sharp, it's something very popular and also used across many programming languages.